friends. Here we are, some 86 years after Plaid Cymru fielded our very first parliamentary candidate. Another election that will likely result in another hang, hung parliament. An election where Wales could prove decisive in its outcome. This is our one big chance to make Wales matter on election day itself, but for every day of the next parliament. An election where it is vital that we re-elect Howell Williams and Jonathan Edwards, and also that we keep Elvin Lloyd's seat with Liz Saville Roberts, our new MP, and that we ensure that they are joined by others so that we can secure the biggest team of Plaid Cymru MPs ever. It is within our grasp, and we must do it because the alternative is more of the same. Plaid Cymru has an alternative to the consensus at the Palace of Westminster. Our alternative is about ensuring a departure from the cruel, damaging, economic illiteracy of austerity. Our alternative is a permanent rebalancing of power and wealth in favour of people in all communities. It's about the people in our country lifting their heads and no longer accepting a position of subservience within these islands. Plaid Cymru's alternative is about giving every citizen a stake in their own destiny, in their communities, in their workplaces, and in a future that is not the exclusive domain of the rich. For the people of Wales, it is clear, clearer than ever before that the only force standing against more ideologically driven austerity, more pain, more punishment, is the party of Wales. Let's make sure people are reminded that when a vote was taken in Westminster on the austerity charter, promising at least a further £30 billion worth of cuts, Labour MPs, yes, Labour MPs, scurried through the lobbies of Parliament to vote with the Tories. Let the people of Wales be reminded that when asked whether or not he could explain this, the Labour, Labour First Minister of Wales shrugged his shoulders and said, and I quote, what happens in Westminster happens in Westminster. Labour will not get away with voting for cuts on one end of the M4 and at the other end bemoaning their impact on our communities. They cannot, they will not have it both ways. At this election, a return of a strong team of Plaid Cymru MPs is our country's only chance of ending the pain that has come with the cuts. The people of Wales are seeing through this great deficit con. Do you remember what they told us from Westminster? They said deep, sharp cuts in public services were vital. They said that they would eliminate the deficit in this parliament. They told us that those with the bro broadest shoulders would bear the greatest burden. So how have all those promises materialized? Well, the deficit stands at 90 billion pounds. The UK's debt is over 1.4 trillion pounds and rising, and inequality continues to grow. The UK is the only G7 state where the wealth gap between the richest and the poorest is growing. Austerity is ideologically motivated. Its intentional aim is to dismantle the state and end cradle-to-grave social security upon which we all rely. It's not rooted in fiscal responsibility or economic sense. The austerity experiment has failed and Plaid Cymru will put an end to it. And let me tell you what else we will end. 
I know that for many people, the very thought of another five years of the current Prime Minister and Chancellor creates real fear for so many people, and with good reason. As a daughter of the from the Valley, I know too well that a usual trick of the Labour Party is to instill fear in people that a vote for anyone but them will result in a Tory victory. Wales didn't vote Tory in the last election, but we still ended up with Cameron and co. Labour didn't protect Wales from Tory rule then, and they won't this year either. The Tories are more than just a toxic political brand. The widespread contempt with which they are held by a majority of people in Wales may well have its roots in the dreadful policies pursued during the 1980s. But its experience since 2010 has shown why people in Wales are right to continue rejecting their kind of politics. And above all, the Tories have never, ever won a mandate to rule Wales, and they certainly won't win a mandate to govern in Wales this May. So let me make it clear again today. No ifs, no buts, Plaid Cymru will not prop up or hand power to the Tories, whatever happens at the election. <laughs> Furthermore, anyone who suggests that we would allow the Tories into government is not only smearing Plaid Cymru, but they are intentionally misleading the people of Wales. And take it from me, they won't go unchallenged. No Tory rule on Plaid Cymru's watch. Now, I very much look forward to the opportunity to fight Wales's corner in the proposed leaders' televised debates. To the Prime Minister, I say this. What are you running scared of? Agree to all the debates and give people the full opportunity to consider the choice that they face. No more excuses. Let's give people what they want. Friends, by ending Tory rule, we must also end Tory policies. Tory-like politicians with red rosettes would be just as damaging to Wales. Austerity is wrong, regardless of the personalities or parties implement it, implementing it. Replacing austerity with economic rebalancing isn't only the right thing to do socially, it's the responsible thing to do fiscally. Plaid Cymru has responsible and achievable aims for public finances. We believe that growing the tax pot through getting people into good jobs is the best way to bring down a deficit. It doesn't have to be through punitive social policies. Achieving balanced books and social justice for the long term means focusing on building the economy, boosting wages and employment opportunities, and investing in inf infrastructure. Boosting the numbers of people in work and improving their wages will help to contribute to the long-term fiscal health of the state. It's been estimated by the independent and respected Institute for Fiscal Studies that in the next parliament, attempts to balance the books by Westminster's parties would be apportioned in terms of 2% of tax rises and 98% of cuts. It's wrong to attempt to balance the books on the back of the poor. Fiscal consolidation is about choices. Plaid Cymru has made a choice. We will seek to build post-austerity Wales. This party believes that balancing the books should only be done in a balanced and measured way. We've made clear our commitment to scrapping plans for a new generation of weapons of mass destruction. This would save billions in startup costs and in running costs. By raising the minimum wage to the level of the living wage over the next parliament, 
£1.5 billion could be saved in in-work benefits that currently subsidise poor pay. And Ply Cymru proposes doubling the banker's levy to raise £2.8 billion a year. Why? Because queues at food banks are growing due to mistakes made by bankers. So the banks must contribute to the creation of post-austerity communities. <laughs> And a permanent rebalancing of the UK's economy, the building of post-austerity communities must mean investment in infrastructure. The IMF estimates that for every pound spent on infrastructure investment, an additional three pound is created in economic activity. It's unfair, therefore, that billions will be spent on HS2 whilst communities in Wales, abandoned by Westminster following the end of our heavy industries, continue to be neglected. The equivalent expenditure on HS2 should be redistributed to regions and nations across the UK, and we call for an overall increase in UK capital expenditure of a modest 1% of GDP annually. This should be focused on projects to create jobs, connect our communities, and close the gap between the London city-state and the rest. A level playing field for all, not privilege for some. In building post-austerity Wales, closing the resources gap between Wales and Scotland is crucial. The Barnet formula has entrenched Wales' disadvantage every year since its introduction in 1978 by Labour. The Westminster parties have entrenched the Barnet formula. If they are committed to its retention, then they should be able to commit to devolved expenditure in Wales to be put on a par with that of Scotland. An additional £1.2 billion a year for our public services would enable us to strengthen our country's economic prospects so that we can end Wales' fiscal dependency for once and for all. But so much effort has been put into arguing against Wales', Wales securing parity of funding by those who claim to stand up for Wales. Instead of fighting against equality for Wales, Labour's time would have been better spent fighting Wales' case at the Treasury. Denying Wales funding equality entrenches our position in the UK as a third-rate entity. When Scotland debated independence, the Westminster elite were busying themselves with promises of home rule. When Northern Ireland refused to implement welfare reform without financial recompense, the Prime Minister himself flew over to broker an agreement. But well-behaved Wales is told to settle for Devo minus. The command paper on devolution, published by the current UK government last week, reflected the race to the bottom on empowerment for Wales. Far from being part of a so-called family of nations, we've been told to be quiet and to accept the crumbs that we're given. When many expected the UK government to outline significant new responsibilities for Wales on top of the cross-party silk recommendations, we can see that the outcome has amounted to a rollback on top of a co compromise. Whilst Crown Estates will be devolved in full to Scotland, they refuse to even open an office in Wales. Whilst securing Scotland's separate legal jurisdiction, Wales isn't even permitted to set policing priorities to enable us to create safer communities. On the one hand, Wales will be empowered to set speed limits, but not the drink-drive limit. And of course, both are proven to impact on fatalities on our roads. As always, Plaid Cymru fully engaged with the other parties in order to improve lives and further our national interest. We have been prepared to compromise, and we have been prepared to negotiate. But Westminster cannot be allowed to treat Wales as a third-rate nation any longer. Isn't it time 
we were a little less well behaved. I can tell you one thing, Plaid Cymru has reached the end of its compromising tether. We signed up in good faith to the recommendations of the Silk Commission in full. As part of that cross-party process, we compromised and conceded a referendum on the most modest of income tax sharing powers with Westminster. But that was in the context of all recommendations being implemented. Silk has been unpicked, even cherry-picked, to accommodate the divisions within the London-based parties. As a result, today, I am withdrawing Plaid Cymru's agreement to a referendum on shared income tax powers. No government should have a choice about whether or not it should be accountable for some of the money that it spends. Shared income tax powers between the two governments should be delivered without undue delay and without the need for a referendum and as part of a wider package of greater devolution. Enough dithering, enough cherry picking. The time has come to deliver for the people of Wales. In my last conference speech, I said that Plaid Cymru would be willing to support the principle of English votes for English laws, providing, of course, that we have Welsh votes for Welsh laws. The latest proposals from the current UK government do not deliver that. We want, and Wales deserves, nothing short of what is on offer to Scotland. In the event of Plaid Cymru holding the balance of power in the next parliament, we will insist on a new Wales bill based on the principle of parity with Scotland. Parity with Scotland in terms of powers and resources. Equality. If that is resisted by the next UK government, then Plaid Cymru MPs will continue to vote on matters of English policy where there could be an indirect financial or policy knock-on for Wales. Respect must be a two-way street. <laughs> the people of Wales know that the party of Wales will insist on our country being respected. I know that there are some London parties who've made some outlandish claims about being the true party of Wales. <laughs> it was quite amusing to see the Prime Minister himself claim that title for his own party. And we know that Labour's branch office in Wales think that a superficial rebrand amounts to being a party for Wales. Let me tell those parties of all colours for as long as you take your orders from London, for as long as you defend the sovereignty of the Palace of West Westminster over the people of Wales, and for as long as your MPs keep voting against the national interest, then there is, and always will be, only one party of Wales, <laughs> Clyde Cymru. Building post-austerity Wales, our country must have the tools to deliver not just a new constitutional framework, but to build a new society based on the aspirations of people here. One of those key elements of social policy we've yet to fully debate is social protection. Our forefathers and mothers built the welfare state at a time when there was no social safety net. Indeed, no nation has contributed more to the creation of the UK welfare state than Wales, from the NHS to national insurance. But brick by brick, the UK welfare state is being dismantled by Westminster. And brick by brick, 
we in Wales must build a new Welsh welfare state. It will be a vital component of post-austerity Wales. It will mean we're empowered to uphold the values of social solidarity that are key characteristics of our country. In post-austerity Wales, minimum levels of social protection throughout the UK could be sent jo set jointly by the devolved governments alongside the UK government. But each government should be empowered to set higher levels and to diverge from UK policy in accordance with the wishes of the people. Never again should the people of Wales have to endure a vindictive bedroom tax against their expressed wishes. <laughs> Never again should our citizens face the punitive threat of benefit sanctions when that is contrary to our values. Wales should be empowered to end the vilification of the unemployed, the disabled and the frail. In this country, the birthplace of socialised medicine, Plaid Cymru wants to see the emergence of a Welsh welfare state built on social solidarity, on, comp on compassion and providing for those who require a safety net. Among the greatest challenges we face is that of growing inequality. In post-austerity Wales, we will have the tools to close that gap. Closing inequality gap isn't just about today. It's about the inheritance we will leave for the future generations. I want the next generation of Welsh citizens to be the ones with the greatest prospects than any generation before them. The raw materials we have in Wales to make this place amongst the des most desirable to grow up, to be educated and to enjoy a good quality of life are unrivaled. Plaid Cymru wants to maximise our country's potential for the new generation. We want Wales to be in the position where free nursery or childcare can be extended and the provision of after-school clubs is widespread to give our young people exposure to music, the arts and sport so that our children can grow up to be well-rounded, free-thinking citizens. Plaid Cymru wants to end compulsory education, extend compulsory education <laughs> to 18 years of age so that our young people have the best educational base that will set them up for high-skilled, well-paid work. And Plaid Cymru will continue to work towards free university education for all Welsh domiciled students who study in Wales. With sufficient financial resources, we could implement that long-held goal. Until then, we'll offer reductions in tuition fees and incentives to students seeking to gain expertise and training in subjects that are most needed in our economy and for our public services, boosting the numbers of engineers, doctors and other health professionals so that the services that people rely on are staffed and so our economy has the pool of skilled workers that we need for a climate of good pay and prosperity. Plaid Cymru wants to maximise our country's potential for the new generation for post-austerity Wales. There can be no greater inheritance to pass on than that of a protected, rich, natural environment. Plaid Cymru's obligation to our environment is as important as economic and social justice. It's why we've consistently called for a moratorium on fracking and why we've been proven right in taking that stand with communities against their exploitation. And be in no doubt conference. Had it not been for the determination of the party of Wales, there would not have been a transfer of responsibility for fracking decisions from London to Wales. No one but people in Wales should decide on the future of Welsh nat natural resources. With a protected natural environment, Plaid Cymru will work hard to create a strong business environment. 
Let me confirm today our commitment to easing the burden of business rates upon our small and medium-sized enterprises. We will take 70,000 Welsh businesses out of the rate system altogether and we will reduce the burden on thousands more. Because it's not just enough to say that small and medium-sized firms are the backbone of the Welsh economy, we have to recognise that in policy terms too. We must grow the economy and society from the bottom up in order to make Wales the economic success we know it can be. And the Party of Wales is ambitious for Welsh business and we know that we won't realise our ambition of full employment without successful Welsh enterprising, uh, enterprises creating jobs and paying good wages. We need a government that will help unlock the full economic potential of our country. Crucially, we want embedded in economic policy an all Wales approach so that no community is left behind. The North, the West, our valleys, communities are being neglected. It's time all of Wales felt a devolution dividend. That principle is incompatible with spending 100% of the Welsh Government's borrowing capacity on one stretch of one motorway in one corner of our country for which all Welsh taxpayers will pay. <laughs> our north-south links and inter-community links are just as important as the east-west routes. By treating Wales as a national economic entity, we will lay the foundations for a stronger economy and prosperous communities. That is vital for when Wales gain, gains greater financial responsibility. A thriving economy boosts the tax pot so that we can in turn invest in our cherished public services in a post-austerity Wales. And those public services need to be strengthened as a matter of urgency and not allowed to wither away. Why the urgency? Because 23% of the GP workforce is close to retirement. That figure rises to up to 50% in some parts of the country. Wales has fewer GPs per head than Scotland and England. In terms of physicians per head, Wales has one of the lowest levels in the European Union. Only 42% of ambulances met the target time of arrival within eight minutes. The target has only been achieved once in over two and a half years. Just 65% of patients are treated within 18 weeks, and the number waiting over 26 weeks has risen to 20% of patients. The Labour government is in denial about the magnitude of the challenge. Their denial is just as demoralising for our health workers and frustrating for our patients as politically motivated attacks by Tories in Westminster. Platitudes before patients. Sidestepping before solutions. Instead of a race to the bottom with slurs and attacks, Plaid Cymru calls on the other parties to join us in a competition of ideas and solutions that will benefit people. The Party of Wales wants to press ahead with an achievable training and recruitment plan that brings the numbers of doctors per head in Wales initially to the UK average and beyond. We want to bring health and social care together so hospitals can free much needed beds and patients can be cared for then in their communities. In this election year, it's especially important for Plaid Cymru to confirm its principles on healthcare. Regardless of events elsewhere in the UK, Plaid Cymru will never, ever allow the privatisation of our national health service. <laughs> We will insist that health is free at the point of use, free of privatisation, now and forever. 
I also have another significant announcement regarding the Welsh National Health Service. I know many patients and their families are concerned about the inflexible nature of providing new drugs or new treatments. There are concerns that the way we make new drugs or treatments available is too slow and patients are often left in a postcode lottery for those new drugs or new procedures. There are concerns too that current arrangements may discriminate against people with rare diseases. So today, I'm announcing that Applied Cymru Government will ring fence Wales' share of the Pharmaceutical Pricing Regulation Scheme. That ring-fenced fund will provide new drugs and new treatments to patients at a national level, ending the postcode lottery and delivering new treatments and drugs that are clinically proven to be effective. It will act quickly and it will treat everyone in Wales equally, regardless of where they live. A Welsh National Health Service for everyone. I began my address to you this afternoon by recalling the history that was made in this constituency more than eight decades ago in the Westminster election of 1929. It was the first general election where a candidate answerable exclusively to the people of Wales stood up to be counted. More than eight decades on, and the people of Wales have not one, but 40 each constituency with a chance of electing local champions committed to building post-austerity Wales. The need for a strong Plaid Cymru team at Westminster is as great today as it was all those years ago. Plaid Cymru is strong because we know Westminster is broken and because we believe Wales can work. I say to the people of Wales today, Make your mark for our country on the 7th of May. Make Wales really matter on that day, and Plaid Cymru will make sure that Wales matters every other day after that. I paid tribute earlier to two giants of Wales who we've lost in recent weeks, Dr. John Davis and Dr. Meredith Evans, both historians who connected us to our past accomplishments as a nation and made us aware of those past events that have shaped who we are today. It's time we wrote a new chapter in our country's story to secure new achievements to make new history. As I speak to people in communities up and down the country as I campaign on behalf of the most energised and talented team of Plaid Cymru candidates this party has ever had, I know that Wales has got what it takes. And I'll close by quoting a line from Dr John Davis's magnificent History of Wales. This book was written in the faith and confidence that the nation, in its fullness, is yet to be.